Today's NFL Daily is sponsored by Mint Mobile. They have changed the game in cell phone wireless coverage here. Plans beginning at $15 a month, and they run on the largest 5G network, so you're saving money and not sacrificing your coverage or speed. Start saving some money today with Ryan Reynolds' cell phone company plan at mintmobile.com slash chat sports. Today's look at the, is a look at the top 10 ESPN consensus draft prospects. Some interesting names on this list. Let's break it down. At number one, Will Anderson, the edge rusher out of Alabama. Anderson was a consensus number one, meaning not just the aggregate, the average. Every single ESPN draft analyst, that's Mel Kuyper, Matt Miller, Jordan Reed, and Todd McShay, all had Anderson as the number one overall prospect. There was no difference in opinion from that standpoint. Anderson last year was insane. He's an edge rusher. If anyone says the words off-ball linebacker to you, do not listen to him ever again. He is an edge through and through. 101 tackles for an edge and 31 TFLs is absurd. He was the best player in college football last year. If that continues, even though teams need QBs, this is one of the – is shaping up to this entire year of football, entire year of evaluation to go. She would be one of the better edges we've seen in a very long time. Now, if you want more NFL draft videos, help me out. Like the video right now. I want to do these weekly and not just mock drafts. I want to do more this year. But I need your help to get there. So like the video for me right now. Let's stick on the defense on the football. Jalen Carter, who was a consensus number two, except for Mel Kuyper, who had the quarterbacks above him. We'll get to those guys here in a little bit. Carter's raw numbers do not jump off the screen to you. Three sacks, 8.5 TFLs. But when you really watch the film, the All-22 side, the impact is clear. I think there is a great argument that as loaded as that Georgia defense was last year, Carter might have been the best player on the football field for the Bulldogs. They have, once again, as we saw in Week 1 against Oregon, a fantastic defensive front and defense overall. All right, so Carter Anderson are most people's answers for the number one prospect. Who do you think it is, though? Let me know in the comments section who the number one prospect for the 2023 NFL Draft is. It's quarterback time now. C.J. Stroud actually tied for third here alongside the other quarterback we'll get to here in a little bit. Stroud for the Buckeyes. I wasn't overly impressed with him in that opening game uh, against Notre Dame. I thought there were enough misses that I was like, ah, you know, I was hoping for a little bit more from that standpoint. But despite being a historically slow starter and maybe some issues with being a uh, – a bit of a cold weather quarterback, as some Michigan fans will tell you. I, I do like the physical attributes and the ball placement for C.J. Stroud. Bryce Young is next up here, also tied for three. Uh, for reference here, Kuyper and Jordan Reed had Young above Stroud. McShay and Matt Miller had um, uh, C.J. Stroud above Bryce Young. Young was very good in that opening game uh, against against uh, Utah State. It, it's a small school, I get it, Utah State. You shouldn't read too much into it, but 295 total yards, five total scores in that game, had 100 yards on the ground. Both these quarterbacks, make no mistake, have talent and will be a back and forth between them all year long. Pick a QB for me. BY for Bryce Young, CJ for CJ Stroud. Right this second, who do you think should be quarterback one in the NFL draft. It's the pinned comment on today's show. So if an ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Let's go to Texas. Yeah, Ben Wasserman said that for top NFL draft prospect. Bijan Robinson at number five on this list, the running back from Texas. He does not need a high-end uh, workload, but, oh, my God, he is dynamic with the ball in his hands. Cannot wait to watch in this upcoming weekend against Alabama. The ESPN rankings, again, a four-man consensus, Kuiper, McShay, Reed, and Miller. Here's where they had B. John Robinson ranked. Kuiper had him nine, McShay eight, Reed six, Matt Miller number three. I love B. John. That's too rich for me. I think top ten is fine, even factoring in the lack of running back value in the modern-day NFL. Robinson makes something out of nothing so many times a game. He is a joy to watch on the football field. I'm all for him being in, in, in the top 10. 
Got a running back in the top five and a tight end in the top six. Now, Michael Meyer might not have the most high-end athletic ability compared to, like, you know, an Eric Gilbert or whoever, but he is consistent. He is reliable. He can block. He is just a very well-rounded tight end. I'm not going to compare him from a high-end upside perspective to George Kittle, but I think from a balance perspective and just being a great football pl player, those are kind of some of the vibes you get there. The Notre Dame offense is at its best when they throw it to Michael Meyer. Like, do that every play, and maybe they would have more success against Ohio State. Elite production last year at the tight end spot. Now, if you want elite cell phone coverage, that's Mint Mobile. Head over to mintmobile.com slash chat sports. Unlimited talk and text on the largest 5G network with plans starting at just $15 a month. Don't just take my word for it. Take my mom's. She made the switch over to Mint Mobile, and she loves it. Unlimited premium wireless starting at $15 a month. MintMobile.com slash chat sports. That link will be in the comment section and in, in the description of today's show. All right, another tie for seven here. Jackson Smith and Jigba first up. Now, we remember him torching Utah against admittedly some backup, you know, corners. But still, the Ohio State receiver pipeline has been incredible and JSN is next up in that line. However, he is likely going to miss some time. A hamstring injury early versus Notre Dame. Didn't make a major impact there. Will likely miss some more time. He is in a battle for wide receiver one status with Keishon Boutte. And oh boy, talk about bad. Um, I Look, I don't know what's going on at LSU, but you have your most dynamic playmaker by a significant margin and you had a tough time getting the ball towards him. And when he did, he dropped two of them. He looked moody, disinterested. He went full-fledged diva week one. And that will turn off NFL teams. As dynamic as Boutte is with the ball in his hands, he played like moody against FSU. That's a huge problem for Kayshawn. So I'm not out on him, but he got to get back on track here sooner than later. Otherwise, his stock will fall. We've seen it many a time before, unfortunately. So of the big two wide receivers, and you can write in Jay for Jordan Addison, whoever if you want, JSN for Jackson Smith and Jigba, KB for Keishon Boutte. Let me know in the comment section. Look, more ties, because, yeah, that makes sense, I guess. That's how things, you know, whatever. Cowardice, I guess. All right, first up here is Miles Murphy. Now, Murphy did not make a major impact here uh, from that perspective. He was, eh, you know, a little up and down, a little inconsistent. Uh, the, the Clemson defensive line overall abused and bullied that Tech uh, offensive line. I'm not out on Miles Murphy. Uh, there were some pretty big gaps overall in the difference in talent level from Murphy. Even uh, guys like Brian Breezy and K.J. Hunter, I think, is, uh, I think I said that right there. Those guys also impressed in a pretty good way uh, for Clemson in that opening game against Georgia Tech. Now, if you or K.J. Henry, that's the name, my bad. If you're looking for more NFL, NBA, and college football slash NFL draft coverage, we've got you covered. Hit that big red button and subscribe at YouTube.com slash Chat Sports TV. The final tie for ninth is Nolan Smith as they go Clemson, Georgia, edge rushers here. Smith was a bit more impactful against Oregon, although that game was over pretty quickly, so he didn't play a massive snap load either. Two tackles, two quarterback hits, a hurry, three pressures per game is pretty damn good. No sacks, that's okay though. Hit the quarterback twice, that led to some uh, other plays on, on defense overall, which I think is impactful from that standpoint. I was surprised Nolan Smith was so low, and I figured out why. He was a consensus top 10 guy for everyone but Mel Kuyper. Mel had number 25, McShay number 5, Reed number 7, and Matt Miller number 9. So everyone but Kuyper says, this guy's a top 10 prospect. And then they just, Mel had him at 25. So, okay, Mel's, I guess, the outlier there. Smith's not that big of a player, uh, but he does offer great bend and burst around the edge. All right, so that was the ESPN consensus top 10. As of filming, I wouldn't be surprised if more updates come in the near future. But who did he, and they will do it throughout the year, of course, ESPN will. We'll keep you covered. Who did ESPN leave off their top 10 list? Let me know right now in the comment section. 
I've got some names you could consider adding to that top 10 list here. Uh, Brian Breezy, I thought, played very well. A guy that has not been healthy, but has had talent, ability, and he was really good when he's been healthy, but he hasn't been healthy nearly enough, and that's held him back. I would not be surprised if when we sit down for the actual NFL, if we're talking about him as a potential top 10 draft pick, he just has to stay healthy after missing so much time, especially last year for Clemson. Keely Ringo, I think, is CB1 in a kind of a cluttered class there. Trenton Simpson can do a lot of fun things for defense for Clemson. Will Levis, I'll make note of, along with Anthony Richardson. I thought both guys played pretty well in week one. It's not a good offensive line class. Peter Skaronsky, though, is, I believe, the number one offensive tackle or guard. He might get to kick inside, so I want to make note of him as well. That is the end of this video. If you made it to the end, you are a real one. Spam real one for me in the comment section right now.